Hey, how's everybody doing out there? Greetings and salutations, everybody. This is Rick Koppel coming at you from Denver, Colorado, with another episode of Bruises with Linux with not a Linux Square guy. That's me. Then, in case you want to know, but by the way, we have a lot of interesting stuff going on today. Clear Linux. It's different. I'll tell you that much. So I got bruise, bruise, bruise. Whatever happened to my bruise, I don't remember. Had a cup of coffee here, but it's gone. Oh no, hi. Ah, what am I gonna do? Oh yeah, I think I took it in the kitchen to get some coffee and I left it in there probably. Anyway, I have I have my water, so that's an important thing for me because I have to, have to take a little every once in a while to keep my whistle wet and and so you can hear me better. We have a great show for you today, I think. Yeah, well, that's what everybody always says. All the alerts. That kind of thing, weird. Anyway, we have a uh, Nautilus screw guy today. We're on tap for me. And uh, we have Clear Linux OS, which is one of the OS we're going to be looking at today. I'm also going to do something a little different, I think. I'm probably going to try and see if I can. Um, yeah, I'll do a sound, quick sound check, but I'm pretty sure I'm coming across on it. Anyway, um, yep, I'm coming across, all right. So, um, so anyway, what was I talking about? Yeah. yeah, so last week I had a little difficulties in my memory and stuff. It's because partly because I have Parkinson's and I have some deep brain simulator, simulator also, which can affect your memory, but also... I noticed lately I've had some short-term memory loss type things, but uh, I might take get. I'm thinking about taking some medication for that specifically. But last week is a little worse because I took a uh, medication that makes me groggy and not think clearly, so clearly. Uh, the night before, I was thinking about the next morning be all gone, but I know it wasn't. <laughs> So I had a little struggle last week. May have struggled this week. You never know. But but anyway, I'm more on top of it this week. I think that was last week. We'll see what happens anyway. Uh, also, yeah, I think I already mentioned I'm going to record parts of this. And I'm going to record it and see if I can edit it down to a reasonable level for people to watch on my... And upload the video that way so that way it make maybe... Maybe make it a little more accessible to some people that don't really want to sit there and watch two hours of me rambling about this, that, and the other thing. It's a live show, actually, so that's part of what live shows do. <laughs> they ramble and talk about this, that, and the other thing, right? So, yeah. So we don't have anybody here yet, but we probably will later on, more than likely. I don't know, some of this new time, I think I lost a lot of my followers I had before when I had on Wednesday night. I think it's a more accessible time for a lot of people. So, if I can't do it on Wednesday night anymore, so what I'm going to do, I may just go back to just, uh, if this doesn't work out, I may just go back to uh, uh, doing my, my edited video, uploaded video type things. Because I can edit out all my uhs and my, my, Dead ends, that kind of stuff like that. Here you'd see it all, though. All, all the fun of uh, of me trying to trying to trying to uh, work out things and get things done. It's one of the things about live shows you see live, live, live. Now, clear Linux OS. Yeah, let's go to the website so we can see what we got there. Hold on a minute. Okay, you should see now, you should see now the, the beginning of the, not the beginning, but the middle of, of the web page there. There's the top of it. It says, Clear Linux OS is an open source, rolling release Linux distribution optimized for performance and security from the cloud to the edge, designed for customization and manageability. Now, that's interesting because when you look at that, and um, yeah, so you got that there. 
and you look at that and you go wow so it's is, is it based on anything not really it's a it's a it's a uh, obviously from the ground up rebuilt system and they did it such a way that it containerized a lot of things and you download you don't download individual programs you download pack bundles of stuff <laughs> But I'm not really, I'm still, still trying to wrap my head around all this stuff. I never really used containerized stuff before that much, so it's a little bit of a new concept for my head to wrap around it. But anyway, yeah, so you can look and you search on bundles and you you load up bundles. Now, it's got this one function, which I'll show you later on, which takes a while. You know, we're going to go through an install of it on my, on live software. I mean, live computer, not live software. It is live software, <laughs> live computer. And um, yeah, so we have that set up for that. And this is a website, so clearlands.org. And you go down through here. That's a memory, it's right thing. It's a little video here. It tells you why Clearlands West. It's good to watch. And uh, it's got containers, run container application from Docker Hub. Cloud control, run a cloud orchestra orchestration server. R basic, run our language for interest of computing data analysis. Excuse me, I know I'm mumbling here a bit, but data analysis. Perform perform a containerized Go application with Intel Advanced Vector Extension 512 on Clear Linux OS. What does all that mean? Well, what it means to me basically is that this is an Intel base system. I don't know if you can't run on any AMD uh, CPUs or it has to have a Intel CPU to run. So that's one issue there. If you don't have any Intel, if everything's AMD on your computer systems, you probably can't use this probably. So there you go. Also, if you don't, if you have a legacy boot, you can't use this. It has to have UEFI boot which if you don't know what this i say google it look it up it's too extensive of a thing to go in here i think so yeah you got this stuff here and you got features yeah i'm, I'm live over there okay features stayed stateless operate without any custom configuration for example generic host with empty Exit directory site the system strictly separates OS configuration first system configuration and the VT user data stored on that system. Closed upstream. Say the latest version of the kernel and compilers. Daily security migration deliver available security updates to customers rapidly. It's open source, obviously. Stateless. Yeah, it's so designed so users can be able to quickly and easily manage or customize configuration versus system configuration. So for customization, there's 4,000 complete packages available. Intel Optimize, highly tuned for Intel platforms where all optimizations are tuned on by default. That's Intel Optimize. That makes me think you can run on an AMD machine. You just may not get all the optimizations. Or built in for Intel computers. Resistance pretty much knew that, I think. So it's everything. As a matter of fact, I think maybe. I think. I don't remember. It's, now, the other issue I got here, and let me go back over here real quick. Now, the other, option, the other issue I have on this deal, or interesting op observation is that I have this computer. I was trying to figure out what computer to install this on using my capture card, you know, to do it because I looked at virtualization and if you look at that, you, you'll just know right away there's something different here going on because, yeah, you want to, you don't want to do this. You can't just hit install in the virtual machine and have it work. You can on the little regular desktop, but you can on the virtual machine and you do all the jump through some hoops install this, don't install that, and run guest editions and and in a 
in a console terminal, then you can console start up the desktop. So there. Yeah, so that's part of what the issue is on that. So virtualization, it's easier to stick a my capture card on the computer and run it that way. <laughs> but I didn't know what computer to run on because I have my car system on this laptop over here. And I have the Twister OS on the Pi. I can use Pi on this anyway, but anyway, that's another another dis difference altogether. I don't think they have a Pi that I recall a Pi option on the downloads. And uh, so what did I what am I gonna do? Well, I had this old computer sitting over there and then I had a power problem with it. I couldn't get it to boot up. I couldn't get the power to stay on at all. And so I read finally looked at some YouTube videos about it and I thought, well, yeah, it's based basically about laptops, so a lot of them didn't apply because it doesn't have a battery you can pull out, that kind of thing, but it does have a, a little battery in there, a little watch battery in there that you can pop out that um, will allow it to reset some things. So one of the options was to pull that out and let's let it sit for 30 minutes and plop it back in and see if it starts up. <laughs> so I wasn't expecting much out of that, but it did. It worked. I got my computer back. Yay. Oops. So anyway, uh, I'll show you that real quick. It's a Dell computer, basically. And I'm going to have to... Get you out of here. Now, you can't really see it very well unless I can get this. I can get it up and up and over this stuff here. Excuse me while I work on this real quick. I was going to record this, but I don't know how much I'm actually going to record. Okay. Maybe I got another where I can, yeah, you see right there, you can see the top of it with this router on top of it. Yeah, it's a Dell Optiflex, I think is what it's called. And let's see if I can get it around the monitor here. You see it there. And it says Optiflex 3010, 3010. Optiflex or Dell 3010. It's a cheap computer. I bought it for refurbished for 200 bucks. So that's part of the issue there. Anyway, so it wasn't going to be a big loss if I couldn't get it work again, but it was a little bit of a loss. I mean, $200, $200, right? So anyway, that's what I had there. And yeah, you get to see the whole view of my my bathroom and everything. Yeah, someday I'm gonna have my own office, I guess, for this kind of stuff. But yeah, so far, an apartment, two bedroom apartment. My son has other bedroom. Nowhere to do but here, right in my bedroom. So that's what you get. So anybody else show up yet or speak up or whatever? All right. Well, we had a lot of fun right there. So now we're going to go back to the website because I got to show you where to download stuff and what what download options you have, that kind of thing. So we'll go back over to there. And we have, oops. Download clearly. So as you click this button here, it takes you to the download page. Now, one of the main, main options you have here is you have your download, uh, launch a live desktop to explore the power of Linux OS without modifying your host. Use the GUI installer to install on bare metal. That's like your computer. Yeah, so if you want to install on a real computer, that's the one you download. That's the one I downloaded. And uh, you see that download button, and it goes to normal download like most people does. Then you install it on your your uh your usb drive and away you go now the installation guy shows down here is the step and step instructions for installing it on a on a v v virtual box or 
virtual machine. And here you have your OS, Code Linux OS server. Yeah. So then you also got containers here. And you have more Docker images. You read more about containers, that kind of thing. And images. Okay. Now here's your stuff status transfer. You can choose which one you want to install on. Um, uh, from USB on hardware or from OS Linux OS on a virtual machine on Amazon or Azure. Yeah, you can guess it has cloud cloud services. You can download this if you want to install on well, Amazon. You can download this on install cloud cloud yes. Azure Hyper-V Google Computing Engine KVMV KVM KVM Legacy Okay So This is one option if you have you said it's required US UEFI It's not actually totally true That's if this works I don't know how well it works That kind of thing how frequently these are updated. Anyway, an image for rebooting in a simple VM using legacy BIOS if using star. Okay, so this is only on a um, VMs that you can saw us on. KVM legacy and KVM. So that depends on which one you want. And VMware preboot execution environment, which is when you want to solve our network. And I told Edge single node documentation on that one. Not apparently how to use it is that far. Supporting and then it's got some other stuff down here scripts for QMU. Yeah, some of these might be older versions of it, that kind of thing. Maybe probably what you want to do is get up here. Most people are going to want to download this file here to install on a virtual, not a virtual machine, but on the hardware. So, yeah, you can do that and you can click download and download it. I've already done that. I've already installed it on my, my, uh, I've already installed it on my Dentoy disk, USB disk. So, and I've got it up, ready, loaded up into the thing, ready to go. So let's take, take, check that out, all righty. So here we are on my bin toy. And yeah, we're ready to boot in this thing now. I've installed it on here once, so hopefully the second time will work just as well. But <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit different of an installer. Now, one of the things you'll notice on this is it takes a long time to install. I think that's probably because it, uh, it has, oh, I'm not sure where I was going with that anyway. Yeah, so, at any rate, uh, yeah, so you have an installer. Yeah, you have clear Linux OS on here. And you just engage that and start it up however you do. Now, I have this keyboard problem here because I have all these keyboards over here and I'm always hit use the wrong one when I want to use the right one so so you hit that in clear Linux OS you can verify so integrity you reboot into firmware interface obviously we're going to boot into the graphical UAG user so and one of the things I noticed about this not on not off of the off of the off of the USB stick like this but whenever it boots up into its regular thing once you got to go in and cook cook and that kind of stuff yeah it's uh takes a while to boot up right here but boots up fast when you get it on your hard drive ssd drive especially it's just this computer has an ssd drive on it and everything installed on it there's no fancy stuff going on there so here you have your GUI of Clear Linux OS. We're, we're not going to look at this a lot because we're going to install. And one of the things they have on here is install Clear Linux OS. 
Yeah, sometimes it's the best way to find your pro programs because a lot of times, like, I'll show you later on, but yeah, when you go to edit. Now, this is the, I think it's called, yeah, I can't even pronounce the word that it's called, but it's CH, some, 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 some installer. So it's going to be a little bit different from everything you've done before. Whole thing different from what you've done before. So, yeah, so Espanol Mexico, and I think it's pretty cool. They got to actually list it out in different uh, uh, languages. Usually you just see all the English stuff here. So you have to know English or at least uh, figure out what. They have a lot of them right now, but it's got a few. Some Espanol, and it's got. Uh, to either Japanese or Chinese or something like that, or Hong Kongese or whatever that's called. I'm not at all privy on all that kind of stuff. Hey, Steve, how it goes? Am I seeing clearly now? <laughs> well, we'll find out. So, so anyway, American English, I'll just follow on here, so you say next. Uh, here you have this, this, uh, this remind me a little bit of the, uh, the, uh, Anaconda installer, the, the Fire, not Firefox, Fedora uses, because you got to click and make sure everything, so I'm not in UTC time zone, despite what you two may think, I'm not there, <laughs> so you got to go here, you gotta hit A, if I hit the right keyboard A, there you go, <laughs> And you can spell it out, America, America, slash, not point, slash, Denver. And there I am. That's how you do that. Confirm I want Denver, yeah. So I'm in Denver time zone. U.S. keyboard, yeah, that's all accurate. Now, no media selected for installation media. So let's check, see what it says. I like how it puts this destructive installation. <laughs> yeah. I. Hi, Sarvana. I didn't see you there. Sorry. I meant to see you, but I didn't see you. How it goes there, Sarvana? So, anyway, we have destructive installation, which is erase all data on select media and install Linux OS, which is probably what we're going to do, so especially. Since I already have it installed on here, I'm going to, re, I'm going to redo it. Or you can say a safe installation. Install on an unallocated disk alongside the disk and partitions. You can also enable encryption here. Do advanced installation. I guess that's where you do with the uh, partition boot. Define your partition, all that stuff all by yourself. But we're going to do this simple, simple. So we'll confirm that. Okay, so now we got the Cine SSD SE 800 256 gigabyte. How much room's on there? Manage user? No user is added? Well, we need to add a user, don't we? So if I'm going to use your name, Rick.
somehow I got muted back on, mute, hit back on there. So I don't know what happened there, but anyway, I'm unmuted, unmuted myself again. So hopefully everybody can hear me all right now. Nobody said, hey, I can't hear you now, but maybe it just happened just a moment ago. Somehow I got muted back on, mute, hit back on there. And now I'm back. So anyway, so waiting for this installation to finish. As you can tell, it takes a while. It's download require packs, and now it's download, downloading, preparing to install, I think. Everything in the system is finished downloading, and now it's ready to install it. When that kicks in, it goes a little faster, I think. But it takes a while for it to kick in. So... Yeah, this isn't the fastest installer in the pro world, but it also, you, you don't have to do all the updates you do on other systems right away when you, after an installation. So there it goes, installing everything. Now, it's kind of hard to tell what it has on the system once you boot it up because it doesn't show you everything that's in the, all the programs. Like I looked for Firefox, I couldn't find it. But when I type it into the thing, it pops right up. I thought it didn't have anything in there. So how's everybody been going with y'all guys lately? Steve and Servan. Yeah. And yeah, don't forget to look at the beginning video so you can see my computer, roughly speaking, that I use used on this. That's one I resurrected. It's installing on this right now. It used to have a uh, pop os on it apparently but uh it bit the dust or something whenever it keeled over whenever it had the power outage or something so i'm not sure what caused that but anyway hopefully it doesn't happen again and it stays cooking which i'm glad i figured out what it was what it was i had to pop the cmos battery out for 30 minutes and then power came back a simple fix did it and i was yeah, originally I bought a new power supply thing. Maybe that was part of the problem. So then I figure out what would be the issue on it. But but anyway, after I put the power supply in there, apparently properly, since it's operating now, <laughs> it still did the same exact same thing it did before. So the power come on real briefly, and then it would kill out, and then wouldn't start up again. So nothing. So. Well, what question I should you use it? Well, that, of course, depends on you, obviously, with your preferences. Now, one of the things, it does have GNOME desktop, so if you like GNOME, you like this, probably. If you don't like GNOME, you probably won't like this unless you install a different desktop on there. So I know SexFC was an option. And we'll look at that here in a minute, I think. Installation successful, yay, I think we're done here. So... exit and i think you have to reboot it yourself probably yeah i think so so we'll reboot the power off i just uh, give me time to get the the thing out real easily I don't think it'll boot up on there because I don't think it's set automatically. I don't think it's set. I had to hit F12 to get it to boot up correctly. Here I go, my Ventoy. Hey, Ventoy. And. Now we can boot, boot, get it started up again. Okay, now you can tell how fast it boots up pretty, pretty fast on the machine. Oh, no boot device found, missing OS, press any key to boot, oh no. I do not find reboot. Oh. Press the key to see if it boots there. 
So, I have a question about this. No missing OS, no boot device found. Okay, we'll have to do F12. Okay. Well, I need to prepare my, uh, Yes, yeah, so lazy boot, UFI boot, other option, bio set, bus finish, and then change the mission. Oh, why I didn't boot though? That's why I figure out why I didn't boot. Hmm, interesting. Doesn't be easy set. See, I'm in there. He's moved the pointer to the desired boot device. Press under to attempt to boot or escape to cancel. Press for. Press for her. Okay. This is where it should be is on this hard drive. But apparently, it's not finding it for some reason. So we'll. We'll change boot mode setting. So we'll go up here. Let's hit escape. Okay. Now we have 12. I can see uh, my, my sand disk cruiser glad over down there. And we have that. Back to here. Hmm. You want to sit through another install? Tell you what, I'll go as fast as I can on this part, and so I don't have to explain everything I'm doing since I've already done that. But I don't know if it's going to work or not. Now. I mean, it worked first time, but I don't know why it didn't want to work this time. So who knows? Find out. I've done something different or something wrong or something there, though. I had to just do a simple wipe the whole disk and do a do a thing on it, but it seems like it's not doing it right. So, am I seeing clearly now? Maybe not, Steve. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, so... Yeah, it's first trouble I've had installing this because I only installed it one other time though. My test run. So. I think this is the installer right here. So, yeah. So, running right from the dock, we'll see that makes a difference. Okay, now I know that one's right. Next. And you yes, like select time zone here. In there. Okay, apparently I'm not getting this very well. I'm an American. Denver. There we are. And I confirm this. And we got America Denver there. I couldn't spell America for some reason. I don't know what I was doing wrong there, but uh, there you go. US keyboard. This is where you need to do it. Yeah, so they said I didn't change it, but it didn't do anything weird, I don't think. I mean, I could have just installed it. Yeah. 
So maybe I'll do this and use the petitioning tool to see if I can petition. No media selected. Okay, that's gonna go there. For some reason will let me do the advanced installation. So I guess I'll confirm. That will try it again. And user. Okay, passwords match. Ministry yes confirm. Hey manager. Telemetry. We'll say yes this time just so they can get some narrative data. Doesn't matter to me. So now it's ready to install. Okay, warning statement will be erased. New partition table will be created. Add new partition table 150 megabytes. A new partition 238.3 gigabytes. Format partition is BFAT boot. Format partition is X2, X4 root. Bar SAM or swap file. So it's got all that stuff there. Should boot, it's got a boot sector. Wonder if it. I needed to wait and something else happened at the end of the thing. You may have killed it too soon. May I have. You have to wait for this sometimes. So we got that cooking again. I wish I could uh, zip over and do this. Speed it up somehow, but I can't. So it's downloading all the stuff again. Well, it may be doing some faster. Copying cache content to target media. So it's got the cache of a... Well, that means it's got to download stuff still or not or what. Maybe we'll find out. So. What do you want to talk about now? <laughs> yeah. Clearly, I was going to say, well, who should this be for? Well, I think one the developers would pretty appreciate since it's got containerized packages you can put together. They call bundles. So it's a bundle. Bundle this, bundle of that. And like I said before, I really am not... I'm still trying to get my head around all this containerized stuff. I really haven't ever used a container system before other than just... Uh, flat packs and stuff like that, which are sort of contain containerized to an extent, but yeah. Have any of y'all used this before or, or done anything interesting like that? Speak up if you have. And so, yeah. So you might want to go get yourself a cup of coffee and refresh. I'll go get my coffee actually. I can do that now. We'll be right back. Okay, Steve says, no, not been interested. Hmm. So you're not interested in clear Linux. It's different, I'll tell you that much. It's very different. Yeah, it's got a different package manager than any other thing, and it doesn't operate the way other package managers operate. You have different commands, subcommands, that kind of stuff. 
which if this works, keep your fingers crossed, then you can see what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, if this still has boot problems, then I'm going to have a trouble taking care of things, apparently. Uh, like I say, I probably need to wait when I click done and see if anything else pops up for a period of time. You can tell this isn't the fastest install in the world, but there you go. So, what are we going to do now, huh? Well, I, yeah, I was talking about Clear Linux. I'm still getting my head wrapped around these bundles and things like that. Really, I'm not real sure. I mean, let's go to the website real quick and I'll show what I'm talking about. Let's see. We'll let that run while it runs while I'll look at this a little bit more. Anyway. There we go here. Um. Uh, downloads about okay so it's clear link so that's highly tuned for intel for platforms it means if you want to really use this you want to have an intel computer because it will be specialized for that particular platform apparently and uh, so in secure, security enabled from the cloud to edge to the end device. So it's got an uh, automated tool that's consistently scanning for CVEs, which are patched accordingly. Interesting. Clear Linux OS employs a stateless concept. Clear Linux OS is built for efficiency. Where 9% of our component packages by a tool ensuring consistency and scalability more than 4,000 components throughout the distribution. Distribution. So, yeah. Yeah, what you got is you got... You got a different... Uh, activities here. And we have... Ships the latest Linux kernel includes state performance patches. Leverages runtime optimizations to auto select compiled binaries, optimizes computer flags, compiles twice to ship multiple libraries. So, yeah, there you go. And it's running PostScript updates now. So, post update scripts. Ah, oh, I see. All right. Yeah, it said system was successfully installed, but I have to wait for see if anything else happens. There's no chance to reboot on there. At any rate, uh, yeah. Yeah, it looks like some maybe a developer might want to use and that kind of thing. It's also somebody who wants fast. Now, one of the reasons I switched from Windows to Linux back in the day one of the main reasons I switched because the uh, Linux is so much faster. I installed the L LXDE desktop. Uh, the L Ubuntu at the time is just LXD, not LXQT. And uh, yeah, so yeah, so I learned on that system, and it was just so much faster. It stayed fast. What I liked about it. I mean, Windows, the more you use it, the slower it got, that kind of thing. At least at the time, it was that way. I don't know if it still is. But. However, yeah, you get that. And you. There's that. <laughs> and you uh, wanted to watch it. Okay, it says installation successful again. 
to see if it installed the now uh, it doesn't use grub to the uses a uh, system D bootloader. There's install bootloader right there. So install the bootloader. Hopefully in the boot section. <laughs> Hopefully. Install swap all same time zone of America, Denver, adding any extra users. Running post install hooks, saving the installation results. Okay, it says it's done. So we'll hit exit. So many options we have. Oh, I need to get back over there, don't I? Let's see. Uh, so anyway, I hit exit here. And let's see if anything else pops up on it. But I'm curious what happened with that. Maybe I need to restart and not reboot. Because the first time I rebooted, I uh, installed it successfully. So maybe this time I need to not just log out, but just reboot, restart. Maybe it loses something in the system ensuing. Maybe I pulled it out too early or something. Who knows what happened. Nothing's happening on here. Nice crystal set, huh? <laughs> nice set of crystals. Okay. Well, and uh, if anything, we could at least do a, do a live. It just doesn't work. And I don't think it'll start on there. I don't think that it'll. Dell. So you find boot. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, we're only been to the only one that's started. Yeah, let's restart it. Oh, no, I need to. Let's I know what Steve's saying. He's saying, well, let's install that Peppermint OS over there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, anyway, let's see. Uh, I need to get out of this probably before I unplug the Ventoy from the thing, just so I don't screw up anything on the Ventoy disk. So, exit menu, ASF6, we'll do that tr trick. Let's see. Okay, I wouldn't want to need to plug it in there. Let's see to a local boot. Try local boot and see if it tells me I know. Search and boot windows. Search and boot grub da for dos. No, 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 no. Okay, I uh, guess you just well, let's just go in here and yeah, that's what I'll do. Yeah, at this point, I think I'm just gonna. I don't know what the problem is, but because first time it worked, and second time, third time it didn't. So, what are you gonna do, huh? Yeah, Okay. Yeah, we're gonna go back to so we can at least look at it and see what you got. I don't know why I'm not able to boot into that. I made sure they install the bootloader and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's decompressing Linux it's because it's there you go. So we still um in Clear Linux OS here. And, uh, yeah, so one of the things I wanted to look at first was the. Was the, uh. Program GLS here. I want to show you what I was talking about. Now, there might be Firefox in here somewhere, but it's not on the internet. At least it wasn't on mine when we first installed. So I connection, you got Pigeon, you got Gears, you got Remedia. But I think if I do this, I do Firefox, and there it is. 
It's repairing power file, so I'll show you, please wait for it to be prepared. Obviously, it's not installed, installed, but it is installed, something like that. I guess it's probably part of the bundle, but it was inactivated or something. Something like that. So, anyway, it's not cooking, it's not working yet. I don't know how long I should wait for this to happen. <laughs> how long should I wait for anything to happen, huh? Um, why would I say that? Now, why would I say that? Because you love peppermint, that's why. And uh, you used to, still are part of the peppermint team, I guess. I don't know, what's, what's your status with peppermint? Is it kind of like... You're part of the team still, or, or what role do you play in that, if you don't mind me asking? Yeah, Firefox isn't starting up here, so this isn't going to work. <laughs> Let's see. Is that anything? I can't get it off the page either. It maybe has some to do since it's on Bento. I don't have any. Okay. So, yeah, so you've seen some of those issues of a new, relatively new project going on. There you go. Now I get an X on it, so I can close that out. And one of the things I did notice on this is, is it, uh, is that you, <clears throat> is that you, uh, can, let's see, it does have flat pack. So you always install things as well as using flat packs. Well, one thing I'm wondering is it's enabled. I have a search. Libre Wolf. And it comes out as enabled, it looks like, unless it's going to give me an error here. No match is found. Okay, yeah, you need to. It is enabled, but you'd have to set it. Flat Hub is a hub you want. So let me look on this real quick over here. And let's see. All right, it's all lowercase. <laughs> okay. okay, so the command to do that is is uh, flat pack remote add. Uh, flat hub and HTTPS and flat hub bat hub <laughs> they miss a nail there Uh, org repo flat hub dot flat pack repo. Okay, so that's the case. Uh, 
and done. Yay, so now if I do the same command I did up there, whoops. Search and search and search and search and search and search and Okay, black pack search labor will so searching. And it's in the no match found still. So hmm. Make sure I did that right. Flat pack mode add flat hub and HTTPS colon slash slash flat hub dot org repo slash flat hub dot flat pack repo. Yeah, I think it says, I don't know, maybe it may be there's something you can't do on a live, live, uh thing probably probably too too complicated for it anyway i you can use flat packs on this i know um original install i did this i installed a uh libre wolf's flat pack version and that's when i found out i actually have firefox on there obviously yeah so if you have installed on road rare installed on red computer you can do that um yeah, so let's take a look at the That's all the LS except ATC your ECC directory. <clears throat> excuse excuse me a minute. Your uh your ETC directory, that's all the other stuff you have in there. So, uh, DNF, DNF. Oh, that's strange. I thought I'd check that for. Well, blow me down. There it is. DNF. So, this might be based partly or at least somewhat on, on Fedora, maybe. I'm not sure about that, but uh, I checked that before and I couldn't find it. Then DNF is there. So. Module slash D. Modules dot D. So the directory. Oh, none of this rabbit hole here, and there's nothing in there. So probably, I'm assuming by that, I mean DNF, even though it's there. But let's try some. Let's install. Uh, yeah, let's install Kitty. See if it does that or not. Okay, so DNF, sudo. DNF, install, Kitty. <laughs> it says there's no unable to detect release version. Use a release server to specify a release version. Download and plug in change log new module name data util. There are no enable repositories in the cetera yum. That's why I keep in the repositories for for yum and DNF and all those kind of uh red hat type package managers. Yes, you have yum in this too, huh? But you have to you have to have fill it in, you have to add repositories, you have to have all stay utilities and change logs and all this kind of stuff. Apparently it doesn't have that in here, but it does have DNF. Go figure. Yeah, it seems like this is still a work in progress overall. Yeah, you would have a hard time using this as your daily driver. First time I installed it, it worked perfectly. I don't know what I did wrong this last time. Why won't, why won't I install all these? Del Y, Del Y. <laughs> so, so that's interesting, but yeah. 
coming in on that either. So it may just be too that this is also due to not having installed on the system. Maybe maybe it has DNF as an option on this so you can install things. I don't, I'm not really sure. Anyway, your real your real package manager is this here. You can see automatically that it's different. You got auto update, and you can disable enable auto update by just typing in the sub command auto update after swap swapped. How do you pronounce that? You can't say after DNF or something like that, you say swapped. <laughs> so check update. Now this is a checks if the new OS version is available. Which I'm not real sure exactly how it works. And you got update, which updates the latest OS version. Not 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 individual packages. You want to install a new bundle? First you have to find out what bundles are available, right? You have doing searches. Or you can also search file, which takes a long time because apparently it's got to download a thing. I don't think it's working this either. Anyway. So let's try and install Kitty. I don't think you can install just Kitty all by itself unless you go to Flatpak or something like that. And Flatpak's won't work on this, so. Yeah, sorry about that. And you list the bundles. Let's do that so you can see what bundles it has. See if we can determine anything through that. Let's see. Update. Bundle list. This we we'll put more on there. Okay, network manager, network manager extras, also utilities. I spell in utilities, bin utilities, buy some bootloader, C basic cheese, clear installer. So some of these are like regular applications, curl. I think in bundles, so they, they include all the dependencies for each bundle, I think. I don't think you have to go through and figure all dependencies you need to and then install those as well. But it's part of the thing about bundles, I think. Don't quote me on this, but I think it's that it has all the dependencies in there. So it's a complete container and burner like flat packs are and stuff like that. So, now we get Emacs. Editors, DOS S tools. Now, one of the DNF, there's DNF for you. They apparently installed the dependencies for that, did it? <laughs> nope. File roller, Firefox, flat, there's Firefox installation, flat packs. So, if you want to install Firefox on this puppy, assuming it wasn't already there, which apparently it is, it's just not activated or whatever, something. Then uh, you just install then you just do the uh, sudo take sudo to you do most anything even search thing or sudo privileges sudo firefly install no oh, bundle add Firefox. Now, if it works, it probably tell me it's already in there. So, loading require manifest. Okay, that might take a while. It's kind of like its update function in in apt, I think, where you update and then then it uh, will. Okay. Okay, error can I load C basic man? Oh right found no space left. Oh yeah, it's cause we got on this uh this uh Ventoy, it's running off Ventoy and that didn't establish any pre what do they call it the pre so that's why you can't do all the stuff on here. So that's part of the issue. 
to the room alive. You can just look at the distro, but you can't do anything to it. You can't modify it at all. Unless you set it up with per the, uh, what's the name? What do you call that? Persistence. Persistence. Which I could do on Mentoy, but I don't have time to do it now. And I don't, I don't even think it work without it being an option on their menu, too. Who knows? Yeah, so. And they have also in here. I have a software in doc, Docker. And terminal and your files. Probably not all this there. And web browser, Firefox, evolution as your email option. That's all out of the box, pretty much. So you, you do get an operational system, generally. You can install it. I don't know why I can't install it on my computer at this point, but try it twice and I can't take any more time for it. Okay. System crash says, hi, hi, system crashes. How you doing today? I use Ubuntu 22.04 and Black Arch Linux. Yeah. Yeah, it's, um, those are good options. Good options. As a matter of fact, I was thinking I needed to do a, my son's here. Uh, he's a, uh, into computer, he's into computer, uh, security. He's going to college for it and stuff like that. Our facts the most intensive semester ever. He's supposed to graduate this next year, though. Next May. So, look forward to that. Anyway. Black Arch. I'm going to do that one eventually. But, uh. I have to wait. I can do some cahooting with him and figure out what we want to do with that. He wants to guest host on my show for that day. Or what? So black arch and that, so. Yeah, so he loves, he likes clear links. Have you installed it on anything? Yeah, I don't know why. I don't know what the computer, problem with the computer or what, but you know, I can't seem to install it on this computer for some reason. Maybe I need, uh, I installed it one time, but second, third time I tried to install it, it didn't work. I don't know why either, because it installed bootloader, installed everything, system D. And so I don't know why the problem is there, but anyway. He likes it, loves GNOME 3. So yeah, you're a perfect candidate for this kind of thing, apparently. <laughs> Clear Linux is nice, yeah. So yeah, I like it as far as overall thing. I'm not a big gnome fan, unfortunately, but I can deal with it if I have to. <laughs> so yeah, so apparently when you look in here, even though it says Firefox here, you go here show application, you might be able to put some input on this uh, system crashes. That is that uh, some of these things I'm not real familiar with containerized programs and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I've had some problems against it installed, but I'm not going to go through another installation at this point because that'd be, that takes us probably the time we need to quit. <laughs> so anyway, I'm just looking at the, the, the GUI that's, I'm looking at the version that's built up off of the, uh, off of what I'm trying to think. Um. Yeah, my mind's going on me up here, apparently here, so I get distracted easily. So I look at all this stuff and wondering what's going on with everybody. So, anyway, we'll look at this here. We have accessories, Decon F Editor, Photos, Education, looks like it's only got one thing in there. The GNU Image Manipulation, or GIMP as most people call it, Departed. HP UI scan, document scanner, HTOP settings, image viewer, system monitor, internet suite stuff. Yeah, all of the whole off LibreOffice installed out of the box or 
starter out of the box. I don't know what it is. I don't know how this just gets installed when you when you look at the other stuff. You got printer setting, utilities, programming, and sound and video. So you got all this information there. And yeah, so any of these you want to look at specifically? There's what you got in there. Internet, you know, Firefox is absent because it didn't see how to be configured somehow, and it's not didn't work on this since it's not have persistence on it. Connections, connections is interesting and that you can connect up to other desktops using it. So might be useful for some people. And let's see accessories. And like HP device apparently they have it all pre-installed disk characters. And I wonder if we did this if we would find out what's going on here. Let's see. Here's where we installed it on. Boot partition one. For some reason it doesn't find that. Oh, maybe it's not mounted. Maybe that might be an issue. Didn't seem like it would work that way on a system wide thing. But I've noticed some other other distros that the partition is mounted. Okay. Maybe we should try it now and see if it'll work. Now we just bag, bag, boots back up to Ventoy, which isn't in the tree. I used to have to have head F12 in order to boot off of that. So I'm not sure what I installed it going on here when I get done, but anyway. Uh, yeah, no good. Uh oh, that's good to know. If you're looking for a secure system for privacy, use cube, cubes or OS or Tails. I work in IT. Yeah. Thanks for the tip. System crashes, and I keep that in mind. Black Arch is interesting. I wanted to look at that, but we can look at that. I don't think I've done one on those. I've done two, two security distros: a Parrot OS and uh, and uh, don't remember the other one off the top of my head. Anyway, it's a more recent version. I do it both with my son, who's in security, but he's he hasn't taken a lot of security courses yet. Most got all of his stuff out of the way, but he's, this semester's different. He's got, this year he's got a lot of security classes. Say 15 hours, so pray for him. <laughs> so, yeah, so anyway, let's see. Yeah, we could boot back up in clear OS, but I think we looked at enough at the top, and I don't want to overextend my stay here, so. Um, yeah. You look at this later on, and you can see what uh, what the computer I installed it on is, the Dell Omni Optiplex. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah, I might install no bearer on here. No bearer, if you haven't looked at that one, it's a KDE desktop, but it's also you can install as a gaming laptop. It has good, uh, uh, 
we call it. That's good with uh, with the uh, NVIDIA driver. That's what I'm looking for. NVIDIA drivers. So yeah, so you can install it on your computer, which I have in two. I have two installed on that one. That's the one for recommend for that one. It's a base, Fedora based distro, which is different from most of them. Most of them are Arch based gaming systems. And uh, Gobert is pretty cool. Does a pretty good job of it. Had a little tweak it here and there, but pretty much not much I had to do to it. So, yeah. And I've installed on my gaming computer out in the living room, and also my son has installed on his laptop, which it also has automatic updates that it does too, which, uh, which is good because he doesn't update his system. That's why we had him on Grudel Linux for a while, and he borked the system because he didn't do his updates. <laughs> and I put a little script in there, but maybe it was too, a little too late or something. It would automatically boot up on him when he logged in. And, but still, yeah, I started having issues because I didn't do some right or whatever. And then the next thing you know, he had, I found out he had like, all these updates to do, and it wouldn't even update anything anymore because the update was broke or broken too. So I so, said, okay, we got to find something different for you. When I ran across Nobera, I thought, perfect. So I installed that on his laptop, and it works fine. So, yeah. Let's see. Yeah, I think that's all we can do on Clear Linux today, and since I can't seem to install them, so I'm going to install something else on here, see if it works or not. I've got several options here, as you can tell. I also have a lot more on my thing. Should have gone maybe with a, with a, uh, I'll show you why I didn't, but should have gone with the Okay. And then you go here and download Clear Linux. And this is what people are talking about. Is if you go to VM, OS on VM. And you see these are all instructions for doing this. So a virtual machine, virtual bar. There you go. So then you have prerequisites. So you have to do all this stuff. Download clear version live server. ISO X C. Clear Linux OS on download page. So you need to download the live server version, not, not the desktop version, because the desktop version will work on a virtual machine. And like most OSs, you can just install that and expect it to work. So it's got all these instructions here. I'll just scan down through real quick and see get all that it tells you how to download and then it tells you how to create a new virtual box virtual machine which if you know anything about it you probably know that but then there's some special instructions in here where you create a virtual machine following settings and you have name Linux blah 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 you have to use Linux 64 bit apparently in there you create a virtual hard disk, which I you know how to do that pretty much. And click create. Then you have to like install Clear Linux OS on VirtualBox VM. Which you, but you don't install the, uh, where is that? Your math installation I know. And the thing you don't download the uh, there's an auto desktop auto start right there. Do not install the bundle desktop auto start right away. So that's a bundle that uh, downloads on the computer and installs on the computer, but you don't let it install that. I, apparently, there's an option in there. I haven't used the server, so I don't know, but 
there's an option there where you can select that to auto to install you don't install that so then you go into your configure your hard disk use your create administrator user and do not install the bundle desktop auto start then you you clear Linux OS installation complete prompt enter then when you do that then you do shut down now then you unmount the ISO and you mount the guest editions on there you install that and you do system reboot and once it's booted up into the LTS version of it then you can install the bundle egg kernel LTS the, the you want the long-term support kernel installs the very latest by default you can do that there and you can clear boot manager set kernel and you can do that clear boot manager update maybe, maybe i need to do that on this one manually manually do the boot manager because i can't seem to get it right on well, so I installed first time I thought it was. Anyway. And then console, click device, so I can install the guest. This is where you install the guest edition. After you do that other stuff, then I think you need the long term support kernel or something like that. Open terminal script. Install VBox. LGA. Yeah, so it installs the drivers, redraws the kernel. Then you can install the uh, auto start, desktop auto start. So there's a lot of stuff you have to do if you want to install some virtual machine that it boils down to. And, and then you're in trouble shooting that kind of stuff. Yes, Arctic has much better gaming performance and best system for gaming to use with Manjaro. Yeah, I've used Manjaro and Gruden and and Jordan did all right, I think, pretty much. But the Fedora, Fedora is the person that did this, Distro Nobera. He basically took it, did all the, he had, he, he had a system where he made a, a Fedora gaming, gaming pro prospects. So he got tired of or change it every time he reinstalled it or something on somebody's computer. So he developed this distro ISO that had all those features built into it. So it has built in kernel support for the latest kernel. It's got all this other stuff. And it does pretty good, actually. I like it. So I got onto my computers, gaming computers, and so far so good. No problems with them. I play Mist on my gaming computer out there, and and all the all the ones that the games that uh, Nathan likes to play on his laptop, gaming laptop, or seem to run well and everything. Yeah, it cooks good. So, at any rate, so I guess that's all we're gonna do for that. Let's go back here to head. There I am, full blown glory. Yeah. So that was Clear Linux for what it's worth. Sorry I didn't get a good installation of it so I could show you some of the things I was going to show you on it. But, hey, well, that's how it works sometimes in these live things. You never know what's going to happen. So. What can I do? So. Yeah, especially since I ran it yesterday and I installed it and it installed fine. I had clear links, so I should have just left it up there. But I couldn't install it on site or anything of those live things. So. Yep. So, Steve, thank you for being here. Servon and System Crashes, thank you all for being here. Uh, I know Linux Saloon is going to showcase... Or a lot of people are going to be on there, so you have a lot of input into it and different scenarios and things like that. And, uh, let 
Yeah. So, yeah, you want to be there for that if you can. Especially system crashes since you're, yeah. They, they, they tend to have a bunch of people uh, zoom in to it. And so it's like a congregation of people discussing things. And Nathan does a good job of, of hosting it. I always used to be there, but I can't anymore because uh, it's the timing doesn't work out because my, my wife's job changed and she now works days and before she's working nights, so I used to have it on Wednesday night, but now I have it on Saturday mornings. Matter of fact, I may need to lay, lay it back another hour or something, so be watching for that if I haven't, but this show is kind of one man show me and I'm not sure what happened with the install why I wouldn't boot up why it just looked like I installed a bootloader and everything in there so it, it can't find a boot on it so there you go that's what it is and I'll just show you that because I'm going to take this out real quick Okay, so I got the wind toy stick right here, and no boot device found. Press the key root machine. So it doesn't do anything, you just see the same error every time. So, yeah, that's what you got to deal with. Oh, you know, looking down here. And so that's what I'm looking at. Missing OS, no boot device found. Pressing key to root machine. And some did install correctly in the bootloader, and I don't know why it installed correctly the first time, but not the second time. Maybe it's installing over the same thing, so it doesn't like it or something. Probably should have wiped the whole disk out and just start with fresh disk. At the beginning of it instead of at the end of it probably maybe that's what i needed to do anyway we're out of time for that so there you go that's what we got yeah i think i probably won't be using clear linux a lot but one i'm not really familiar with containerized stuff that much it looks like it'll be a cool system once it gets operational and good stuff and and like I say, it's I uh, installed it the first time and it worked, but and apparently can't install over itself that much easy. So something's goofing up there. At any rate, that's all for today. So I'll we say was then try stick with Zimbu. Well, I don't think it's Ventoy because I installed it successfully with Ventoy the first time. And uh, I'm not sure another installation because it went into the installation all perfectly. Installed everything like it showed the first time. But the second time, the third time, maybe because I installed it, maybe it's installed or itself doesn't like that or something. Does some little goof up or. or doesn't update something in there, some that if it's already there. Don't know what what the situation is. But I experiment and I don't have time for that on this show anyway. So I guess I'll say Yeah. Fintoy does have problems with other systems some ones, but uh, it's never had to give me any problems at all. I don't know if I just uh, got a good uh, version of it to install or what but have any issues with it boots it still boots up everything pretty much off, off the off the ground so there you go i guess so we'll call it a day thanks for jumping along with me even though i didn't get to really see the full full impact of clear linux thanks to installation i'm going to try that i'm going to go into I'm going to go into a uh, G parted and clean the disk and then reinstall it. Just so you reinstall the system, see if that works. My, I'll report on the Linux Loon Telegram results of that. So 
just so you'll know what happened with it. And uh any ray toy yeah. So I could just do a regular B install at some point if I have to, just to make sure this regular uh USB stick with D D D D D D D that's what I use for that. So that's what I got. So May Linux Force be with you. Bye. See you next time. Also, don't forget to subscribe and like if you like and want to subscribe to the videos. Be sure to do that. Bye. Mm -hmm.